Okay, 1.30, call the meeting to order. This is the Council on Aging Board meeting, Northampton Senior Services, Thursday, September 10th, 2015. Uh, public session, I don't see anyone here. So we'll go ahead right to the approval of the minutes from the July 9th meeting. We have a motion, Barbara. Mm -hmm. Second. And any uh, changes or corrections, Patty? Um, so where it says approval of minutes from previous meeting, um, the, the motion was made by James Spencer and seconded by John Kaczynski Jr. to approve the, and it should be June 18th, not July 9th. Yeah. And it's Spender. And it's Spender. <laughs> they <laughs> spell Spencer. Yes, yes, yes. Spender. <laughs> What was the date? Uh, June 18th. Yeah. Yeah. So we'll put it. Yeah. So we can't even approve the minutes. No, we can't. Oh, oh. No, actually, we can't. We can. want to. Mm -hmm. We've got seven. Oh, no. We've got 15 members, and um, actually, you know, quorum is eight. You only have 14 members because Patty Healy. Um, resigned and chose oh, chose not to get reappointed. Oh well, in that case, we have a quorum. Okay, then we're safe to go. I was not aware of her resignation. Well, I'm, I was going to share that today. Okay, <laughs> okay. I'm glad you said. Who's that again? <laughs> um, Patty. 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 Okay, so uh, let's see approval of the minutes. Uh, any other uh, corrections on the minutes? Questions or comments? Okay. All those in favor? Aye. All those opposed? It's passed. Staff report from Joanne Brooks, Media and Marketing Coordinator. And Secretary. <laughs> of well, just to give an update um, about the Pond Street Chronicle and Media and Marketing, the total number we print, we've been printing per month, is about a little over 4,000. That is just printing. Uh, approximately 480 or so are distributed throughout the community by uh, Bob here and about 175 or so are left in the lobby you know in the front lobby in the lobby for folks to pick up actual mailing of copies is about 3425 that actually go out in the mail and we also have an email option it's about 173 it very you know it goes up and down but that's that's been like the the norm for the past month or so. Mm -hmm. um, press releases, I took a look at the press releases and figured I'd let people know, you know, what we do on that. Uh, we're averaging about 15 to 20 per month, that's about an average. Um, they're done either by the staff who's responsible for the event being publicized, or the program coordinator, or the media, or myself, the media and marketing coordinator. And they're done, most of the press releases are done at the time that the Chronicle is being published because, you know, we're trying to get publicity out. But that's, you know, throughout the month and things, it, it varies. The, then the information um, from those press releases are given to me, and the events are posted on about seven various calendars. Uh, the one on the website, there's a Northampton one, there's Craigslist, there's, you know, a number throughout throughout the uh, internet that you can post them on. Uh, Facebook and our website. So I try and get the information out there as, as best I can. And the posters are made up from the information on the press release, posted on the various boards throughout the building, emailed to approximately 37 contacts, which include the various retirement communities, the libraries, some of the hospitals, and whether they put them up, I hope they do. They say they do um, things and those places. Um, the posters are also sent to the mayor's office to put on Spotlight, which is the, on the front page. You'll see a tab that says Spotlight. Put them up there, a section of the website, and they're posted on Facebook and on our website page as well. The donor directory is underway. Um, I, hopefully people have received their donor directory cards and they're, they're coming in. I haven't had the opportunity to post yet because they just started coming in, so I don't have a total yet, but I'll have that. Hopefully, you know, within the next week or so, definitely by the next meeting. Advertisers will still need, uh, needed. We've approached some of the retirement communities, you know, the Lathrop's, the nursing homes, Calvin Coolidge and things. But it seems like they're becoming more comfortable with sponsoring events here with us, for us, Highview and things. Um, I 
try to keep talking to them and they're like, well, you know, we'd rather sponsor things, but yet you see the ads in the Gazette, so who knows their rhyme or reason. So if anyone has any other thoughts or, or people that I can tap into, please let me know. And any questions? No. Yeah, I think the question in terms of the um, the pickups of the, the newspapers, do, do all of them get picked up each month? Like yes, something? Okay. and then some. Okay, and then some. Great. So okay. I, I've increased it last month. I increased mm -hmm. the last time from August to September. I'm going to increase it by we've oh. been increasing it by 25 okay. increments of 25, and they do they do get picked up. Mm -hmm. And some of the folks okay. have said instead of mailing it to me. I'll just pick it up, or I have now that it's online. I'll just read it online. Yeah, so you know, it's it's changing a little bit. We're probably one of the few um, senior centers that actually have a newspaper, mm -hmm. not a newsletter, and we're probably one of the last, uh, or one of the few, who still mail them directly to homes. Yeah. And so you know, Joanne was talking about the donor directory advertisers. Mm -hmm. The way that that paper gets paid for is through the donations for donor directory. It's the advertisers, it's any other kind of donation that comes in and it pays for the insert that's every other month and then the um, publication, the multi-paged chronicle, um, which is six times a year. That gets mailed, so it's for postage and for printing. Mm -hmm. And it also pays for part of Joanne's salary. So, you know, we really rely on all of the um, already mentioned uh, items to make that paper keep going. Well, the revenue sources, yes. Yeah, yes. we need the revenue sources. <laughs> and one other thing, uh, the papers that I drop off at various businesses throughout uh, Northampton, Florence and Leeds, I find that for the most part, uh, when I go back the next time, they're mostly gone. Okay. Maybe one or two left as a drop. Okay. So okay. and ones, uh, ones where there wasn't much of a response, I reduced the number of papers okay. that I leave there. Good. But uh, generally, most of the ones I deliver are being picked up. Well, that's good. And I do try to remind the people at the various organizations that there was an insert coming the next month, and it's published in the paper the day of the insert. Mm -hmm. So does everybody see the insert that's in the mm -hmm. Daily Hampshire Gazette? Mm -hmm. I mean, do you all catch it? Because mm -hmm. I'm sure sometimes there's um, additional supplements in the paper. So, oh, yeah. so yeah, it's good to know that our our dollars are being spent wisely mm -hmm. to get the word out. Mm -hmm. yeah. This month, um, especially, uh, and I think it's because of the shred bags or shred day or something. There's a lot of folks that have come in, mm -hmm. you know, to at and called about shredding and whatever. Um, because of that, you know, we've had a lot more people come in and say, you know, and we'll ask. I ask the receptionist to try and remember to ask, how did you hear, you know, so on and so forth. Okay. And they'll say, well, in the insert or in the newspaper or the calendar, I looked online, so, or I looked on Facebook. We have over 200 folks who follow us on Facebook, which isn't a whole lot, but yet, you know, it, it's growth. When I started, when I started here, it was 130. Yeah. So. It's the senior cool. community and a lot of people are on computers and Facebook, so it's, uh, yeah. it's not too bad. So how do you get on Facebook? What's your... Um, Northampton Council on Aging? Yeah, just... Yeah. 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 Not NCOA, it's the whole thing. Correct. Now, one other thing, I was working uh, the front desk on Friday, and I noticed we had one out of the $10 bags for the shred day. Mm -hmm. So we had had such a, a response that we were... Several people came in, and we told them they would have to come back in a couple of days when we were getting new ones in. So could be only that response is pretty well. That's a good we, we actually weren't able to get more. The um, Valley Green Shredding wasn't able to get more to give us. But so today, two people came in kind of at the same time. And um, the first person, I sold the bag that was our display bag um, so that she would have it. So, but it's, there's been a tremendous response for this shred day. Yeah. We yeah. sold 35 yeah. bags. We sold 35 bags in about, what, three weeks, I think? Yeah. 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 It, was, it was a short period of time, but we sold 35 bags. A lot bags. of people will come in with a single bag or two or three boxes of stuff, and they'll, yeah. uh, I was here a couple of times on the shred day, and they, yeah. they pour right in. It's, uh, well, a lot of people are piling up all this stuff. And even if you have a home shredder, they can take you, you know, half a day to shred this oh, stuff no. up. Yeah. 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 So you shred a couple yeah. of things and you say to yourself, no, stuff so in the bag and yeah. wait for shred day. So, yeah. Yeah. So we look forward to a wonderful <laughs> group. Hopefully it doesn't rain too hard. Mm -hmm. No, it's not supposed to rain Saturday. No, no it's going to be nice. Sunny. 
Yeah, yeah. Saturday, Sunday, yeah. Friday, yeah. not so much. Come down and you'll see. <laughs> That's right, bring a shredder. Bring a bag or something. Bring a bag. So Joanne does a great job with the paper and yeah, um, you really know, we, we try to work really closely on what kind of news is going to yeah. go in it and who's going to do I what. I agree. It really, it's, it's, it's really it's, it, it gives you information that's knowledge, you know, not just like folksy kind of thing. Yeah, it's it's important too. Yeah. Yeah. But, you know, yeah. it's both. It's both right? We have the lawyer giving uh, advice on the seniors yeah, and uh, right. you know, yeah. things like that. So there's a lot of stuff in there. And that is readable and that's meaningful. Yeah. Well, it's, you know, all the staff has yeah. certain pieces yep. that they they submit and mm -hmm. you know with those pieces we put it together yeah. so it's a team effort thank yeah. you very much joanne yeah. okay. okay moving on to finances uh, fyi 16 budget yeah so we're in the fy 16 budget cycle and um the city is closing the books for fy 15. So here's the um, OM and PS account, city accounts that we have. And I, I won't talk about it until you each have a copy with you. Yeah, so this budget is July 1st, 2016 through June 30th, 2016. So the city appropriation for um, personnel, um, 191,272, and then um, our OM is uh, 10,264. Um, and then, so this is what the city has appropriated to us, and we're very um, glad to receive it and thankful that we are a city department. And then we raise, I believe it's about 102,000 um, this year to supplement our budget. I could be off by a little bit on that. Um, and we do get the grant from EOEA, which I had mentioned at uh, a previous meeting that the uh, dollar amount is going to be higher. And um, the EOEA grant, <coughs> excuse me, um, pays for. Um, the salary or partial part of the salary for the program coordinator, which is Heather Kaling, and for the social worker, Michelle Dillman. So that's pretty much um, what the EOEA, Department of Elder Affairs grant, is used for. We also call it the formula grant. So that was sent in. Good. Yeah, so we're glad to get that grant. So you don't know the exact number yet? I, I do. I. I I think if we look through the minutes, I probably had said it in one of the minutes. Well, uh, you said it possibly was going to be with us, what, eight? Yeah, so what are we looking at? Yeah, so if it's not in here, I'll get it for you, but I thought for sure I had covered it. Um, so it's the number of seniors in Northampton times um, the dollar amount that the state provides. So, um, no, it's not in this one. This was, um, I'll make sure you all get it, because it was, it was great to get it. Yes. Yeah, it's $9,862 times um, $9. It's $9, isn't yeah. it? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So you can do it in your head. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no, <laughs> no, no. no. My head doesn't go that high. Yeah. Hmm. Right. So the next federal census will be in 2020. Mm -hmm. so it was 2010. So. And, and I think I've mentioned before that because we now have additional housing. I've got mm -hmm. Linda Manor and uh, at um, the new one up at Village Hill, mm -hmm. um, Christopher Heights. Mm -hmm. um, we'll have a, a number of uh, additional yeah. seniors to add. At Rock Ridge, they're building, or they're going to. Yeah, so, you know, it's just, you know, some things have closed, like the Northampton Nursing Home. Um, that closed within, uh, since 2010. That what was a waste. Time. I mean, what a waste of a building. Well, there's some good things that could be used that. I know, yeah. senior housing sure. would have been ideal. Yeah. Well, maybe somebody will buy it and do that. Mm. 
because we could we could use some um, senior housing that's not quote public it's housing or expensive. at the higher end um, mm -hmm. like Bear Hill. Mm -hmm. um, right here, no. <coughs> Now where I live, where she lives. Yeah, and so um, our control is just to give an update with the annual appeal, which started with the federal uh, the um, city census. Um, I think that went out in March. Um, the only cost to that appeal is the envelopes. So there's an envelope sent to every household. So that's a little over sixteen thousand. Every city household, not just senior household. Mm -hmm. So um, right now it's a little over $2,900 that we've made from that. It's a little less at this point than we've gotten in previous years. We can um, bring in with the annual appeal um, anywhere between $5,000 and $7,000. So, and the annual appeal actually <clears throat> keeps going because we get checks um, and, for, and contributions up until like December. So. So that's kind of an ongoing, it's one of our bigger um, fundraising events. Um, so we do thank the Board of Registrars and the City Clerk for putting the envelope in the census as an insert um, because they only allow two items to go in there and we've been very fortunate to be one of those items. Um, and speaking of that, I just sent a letter this morning requesting that we be allowed to have that in there again for FY6 for 2016. So hopefully that they vote to uh, approve that. Well, it's good exposure. Yeah, and I, th I want to say that we get a lot of support from the community um, with the annual appeal. Um, and again, it's not just from seniors, it's people in the community who support what we're doing. Um, donations can be anywhere from $5 to $250, so um, it's all over the place in terms of contributions. And they're all appreciated, whether it's $2 or $1,000. It all helps to support what we're accom accomplishing here. Okay, is that it for finances? I think so, just maybe. Do you have any questions on that, or comments? Okay, uh, we're going to skip election of offices. Yeah, I think we've already done we, that. We didn't take that off. Uh, and we'll go right to the director's report. Okay. Um, so I had sent a letter um, to those board members whose term has expired. And I sent the application which needs to go to the mayor's office to be considered for reappointment. So hopefully whoever got that. Um, as well as I talk to people, to board members. Um, so in order to get reappointed, that application needs to go to the mayor's office. Um, and um, so in talking to different people, Patty Healy um, did resign. Um, so um, th there was gonna be a vacancy on the, on the board with that position. So we have 15 members, and, well, 15 14. positions, but with Patty not on it. And um, th there are maybe two other members who um, we haven't really seen or heard from um, at our meetings who uh, most likely will not look for reappointment. Um, Bill Hubbard, who um, is our primary van driver handyman, um, is retiring for a second time. So he's <laughs> retiring from the senior center. And his last day was last Friday. Um, and when I meet with the mayor, I'll ask if that position can be refilled. Um, so th that position did a variety of things. Um, and it takes a number of skill sets for whoever's going to fill that mm -hmm. job. So um, it was good having Bill. Um, also, um, Anthony Neverson, who's one of our fitness assistants um, is going to be leaving September 22nd. Um, he has more opportunities elsewhere. He was usually working eight to 10 hours a week here. So um, he started off with Crystal as a student intern um, and then he volunteered and then we hired him um, a couple hours each day. So uh, he was well liked and um, he enjoyed being here and was appreciative of what we were able to provide to him for 
what we have here at the senior center. So you will be missed too. It's excellent in the um, fitness center. Um, we had received a grant for LGBT services from Highland Valley Elder Services, <clears throat> and that was um, a grant that we applied for that went through Elder Vision Inc. Friends Group, and the grant was for $3,700. We received 1,998 of it, and I received a letter from Highland Valley saying they were not going to um, provide us with the rest of the funding because um, my timetable for providing LGBT programming was not what they expected. It wasn't moving fast enough for them. That's my word. Um, so they will not provide us with the um, remainder of the funding, which is about $1,700. So, um, uh, you know, the, we had a signed contract. Uh, I'm not quite sure how they can just decide not to um, provide the rest of it because it wasn't their timetable. Um, well, but, but I, more, more grants, I mean, because I, I look over grants in the, you know, at the Arts Council. Mm -hmm. You have a timetable, and, you know, that's part of the grant, and they should have told you up front if that wasn't acceptable yeah the timetable for the grant that we were awarded ends on September 30th so it was a federal fiscal year so it started October 1st and it went through September 30th so that was when we had um, to implement programming and spend grant money okay and, okay, and you cannot can you ask because sometimes I know in the Arts Council people will ask for extensions so that's not even possible to get an extension well, I think the letter was pretty firm about them not providing the additional funding. Um, so anyway, I'm chatting with somebody about having a signed contract. And the thing is that we're still continuing LGBT programming. Um, mm -hmm. And you know, what, what has been going on with what we're doing as a senior center for LGBT programming is based on our schedule, not on um, Highland Valley's perceived schedule. Um, mm -hmm. So, I mean, we're still going to move forward with uh, a lot of the ideas that came out of the group. So it's, it's going to happen and we'll just fund it through donations or other, other means um, and not with Highland Valley Elder Services, mm -hmm. apparently. Um, so we've had two meetings. There's another one, September 23rd, for LGBT. Um, one of the big things that's happening is um, in the library there will be a lot of books um, for LGBT. Um, readership and um, we're going to be doing a um, games night um, in September I think September 28th or something um, and then other things will transpire so that's that's what's happening still so we're, we're moving forward um, uh, on the agenda you'll see under new under new business volunteer opportunities here, which um, I was going to sponsor a fair where <clears throat> agencies and organizations could set up a table and ask for volunteers. It was going to be four to six, um, but I did not recall that I, the RSVP was going to be doing something similar to that until it was kind of like the same day or whatever that I had already told them they could use our building um, to do the their. Um, volunteer job fair. Uh, they did it here one other year. I'm going to say maybe five years ago. Could be longer. Um, so anyway, they're going to be doing one here, um, RSVP when I say they, um, October 15th from 10 to 2. And then in the spring, we'll do one here that will be from um, 4 to 6 to catch people who are still working. Um, but we'll, we'll do that uh, in the spring. And in the spring, we also have our health and safety fair, but I think one month the health and safety fair, the other month, maybe like um, April, we'll do the um, job sphere. Um, Bob Griffin, who had been our um, volunteer landscaper out there, bringing plants from his gardens, helping with all the mulch and just keeping things looking spectacular out there. Um, is retiring from us um, as our, our volunteer landscaper. So um, 
He's been here for almost two years, if not a little bit longer. So he's, he's done a tremendous job here, much appreciated. And um, yeah, we, we hope to still see him around uh, the center, but not probably in our gardens. So. But it, it, he did an excellent job out there. He really knew what he was doing. Um, I received a flyer, you hear about this every year, the Dollars for Scholars is having their annual scholar, uh, their um, scavenger hunt. So if anybody's interested in being on a team, usually what they say is, oh, there's somebody who will sponsor a team if you can come up with the people. So if anybody's interested in it, because I think everybody sitting here must know everything about Northampton. Um, <coughs> the date is Saturday, October 3rd, 9 to 12.30. So you can all think about it. and. Um, I know, Kathy, you did it one I year. did it one year, yeah. yeah. So, so that's I didn't know that was happening. <laughs> so any takers, let me know. Uh, tomorrow we're having um, Elder Economic Empowerment Seminar, which is being sponsored by the DA's office and Sheriff Harvey and Sheriff, I think Dolan from uh, <coughs> Greenfield. Mm -hmm. So that's here tomorrow. Um, we're glad to have them in the building to do that. Um, currently, I'm planning the ninth, I believe, annual craft fair and marketplace here, November 14th. It's a different date than usual. Usually, it was going to be the Saturday before Thanksgiving, but now we've moved it up. So it's November 14th, 9 to 2. So it'll be craft vendors, very similar to last year, craft vendors and vendors who sell um, items that they don't create, but you know people will purchase, um, and pretty much. Most of the building gets used. The bistro is open for lunch, coffee shop, gift shop, um, gift shop annex, collectibles. So it's a you know a time that we kind of really empty all of our stored up merchandise, right, Mary? Yep. <laughs> and then you know hopefully the whole um, great room and lobby. That's all the vendors. Um, and again, this is um, like the annual appeal, one of our major fundraisers. And when I say that, it means that you know we make more than a couple hundred dollars. With this, it's like hoping to make twenty-five to twenty-seven hundred dollars. Um, <clears throat> starting here um, next Tuesday, um, Calvin Coolidge Nursing and Rehab is sponsoring a Better Breathers Club a monthly meeting from 5.30 to 6.30, and it's a support group for people with chronic lung disease, asthma, lung cancer. Um, so that will be here, and the public's invited to come. Um, and again, that's gonna be the third Tuesday of every month from 5.30 to 6.30. Um, Chris was working with uh, Springfield Tech and also Springfield College, bringing students in to work with one-on-one um, -on -one with with seniors um, with OT. Yeah. Um, so we're glad they do this almost every single year. Uh, uh, occupational therapy. Yeah. 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 Great. They're mm -hmm. master's level students that do mock evaluations, but okay. they're um, rather than submitting the evaluation directly to the senior that they're evaluating, they submit it to their professor first. The mm -hmm. professor goes over it and mm -hmm. then it's submitted right. to the senior so that they get a report based on you know changes that they can make and mm -hmm. whether it's you know their their ADLs and their IUDLs and how they're doing things um, in their house so in this past summer we had a student from Springfield College an OT student who did a three week three times a week program <clears throat> that was an assortment of music um, art Games, a whole thing, just an array of things that she was working with um, seniors on, so it's nice having her here too. Um, Health New England is going to be doing a, a videotape <coughs> ad here. They needed a place where they had activity, fitness activity space, so we have both the activity room and the fitness center. And um, they're, they're having it taped by an ad company, and again, it's for Health New England. And, um, they they have already have they have a senior who's going to be the person interviewed um, and it's a health New England um, customer um, so 
I think that's kind of exciting that when you see that mm -hmm. viewed, it will be yeah. here. Are you getting any any reimbursement? I, you know, I didn't expect to, and then after making all the arrangements and what we could do and what we couldn't do, yes, there was a tremendous amount of um, revenue good. coming from this. Good, good. So I thought that was good. quite good. Excellent. Uh, Mass Impact Day, which is through UMass, um, we've done this for two years, um, Saturday, September 26th, so Crystal and I will be working with students and it is um, to go to seniors homes to do special projects in the past we've had them in the year that i was here there were maybe 15 or 20 students i don't know how many you had um, and you know they cleaned everything in here um, do you have to meet um eligibility yeah no 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 nope. anybody if you have something that you want done um what you can do is call crystal and you'll get put on a list and if we have 80 seniors, we have to do a lottery because we don't have 80 students. So, um, no, if this is, if you're a senior, we'd love to have you have something done. Mm -hmm. It can be anything yeah. from, you know, a painting project at your house, or it could be moving lawn furniture that you might have in your backyard that you need to put in your shed, planting mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. like, um, they wash yeah they will do a variety yes, you just church. you just have to have anything that you need to get the project done so yeah, if it was washing windows you would church. have to have the equipment we're just bringing in the volunteers mm -hmm. right? but yeah if you submit um you, i just need your name and what you have for a project and um patty and i will go over the names and projects and see what we can get done and if it's too many people then we all do the lottery draw or the drawing and when did you say all of you please saturday september 26th oh my dumb granddaughter gets married the 25th <laughs> <laughs> i didn't care that i don't think we've got any volunteers who can take care of that <laughs> yeah. she probably already i don't know if somebody sees her maybe they will yeah <laughs> kind of cute <laughs> um, there's going to be another take back the drug day um, where people can turn in their prescriptions. Uh, it will be at Jackson Street School. Uh, it's the uh, last Saturday of the month. I think it's September 26th. Yeah. Anybody? Is it September 26th from 10 to 2? And. Um, What's available, and I'll speak for Northampton, is that there's a drop-off box at the police station. So if you have prescription medication you don't want anymore, you can put it right in there. So, but it, it's still amazing how much gets dropped off at these uh, take back the drug day. Should you take um, the labels off or leave them on? You can leave them on because they get destroyed. They burn. That's a, actually a very common yeah. question mm. people ask. But oh, yeah, because we're all about identity mm. theft and all of that stuff. Um, oh, right. So people ask about that, and it's like, no, it gets destroyed. Um, they shred the bottles, the labels, and the mm. everything. All everything yeah, mm. gets. Yeah. So you know, it's all to keep the you know aquifer yeah, clean wow. and not to have polluted water and well, keep people probably, from dumping drugs down the toilet. Yeah, yeah. yeah. which yeah. goes into the sewer system, which tends to well, it all, go a lot of places. Hinders our ecosystem. Yeah. 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 Um, the senior <coughs> and volunteer work, work off program. Um, the last day participants can work is October thirty first. And then um, in November, the new cycle of applications, um, people can apply for 2016. And currently, there's 20 slots available for seniors and 10 for veterans. Um, so I, I, I don't know if the mayor's going to leave it at that. Um, but it, it's been a wonderful program that offers a great opportunity for those seniors who are eligible to have a reduction in their property tax. And I'm going to speak for some of the departments that you get a lot of um, additional tasks accomplished within your department. Mm -hmm. And we've had a number of uh, senior tax work off people here at the senior center. Um, so the city is finding it's working for it too. So yes, yeah. yeah. You know, the only hope I always have is that I have more departments who want people um, to be part of 
uh, the tax roadmap program because you know you do have to supervise and you know provide yeah. um, direction yeah. and um, oversight. Yeah. So it'll be happening again. So it's a great program that the mayor put forward. Um, and then Joanne already mentioned on uh, Saturday we do have Shred Day um, and it's from nine to twelve and it's outside rain or shine, which we hope it's really shiny. Mm -hmm. um, and again that you know it's a fundraiser so it, it's brings a lot of different people in i think last year we had somebody come from chickabee to drop off their shred thing right. and it's like how did you know we were doing it and so i went online and looked for somebody who was shredding and mm -hmm. it was you so we came right. back and, and did it so so that's what i had to report okay any questions comments okay let's move to building and grounds um, well, Chorus, we are happy to come back this week. So they're starting their their um, fall series of practices, and then they'll do their performance. Um, so we're always glad to have them back. The Paintbox Theater was here for three weeks mm -hmm. in the summer, and a very enjoyable time having them in the building. Um, and you know, again, both of those groups pay rent. And I already, um, I ran into Tom McKay last night and said, oh, you should let me know what your dates are that you want for 2016 if you want to come back in the building. And he sent the dates to me this morning. So um, they are very interested in coming back. So, um, yeah. And I already mentioned about Bob Griffin not being here for the um, building. And um, that's, that's what I have. Okay, any questions on that? John? What's the update on the fitness center move? Um, right now I'm looking for one more um, company that I can get a bid from. I need three companies to get bids for the equipment and the moving of the current equipment. So it's, it's tied in together. So I have two. Uh, one I already have received, one of the um, costs. And then the <coughs> second one I have yet to get information from them, a cost for the pieces of equipment we want to purchase, and then I need a third one. I need a third company. So you're looking for a bit on moving in the purchase of a, a couple of pieces of new equipment? Yep. yep. Do they have to do any prep work to the room or any modifications? No, everything on the room, it basically whatever's in there has to come out, and um, there'll be a warm-up area, and that, and the lockers have to get moved, and then the, all the equipment that's in there, and then the new equipment. Yeah, so that's, yeah, 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 you won't have to warm up in the lobby, so it'll be safer for them. And you are gonna get a replacement for Anthony? Um, I have to get, talk to the mayor if that position can be filled. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I was in conversation with someone who does the fitness program, and they were wondering uh, if they could come in and out of the back door. And I felt that it probably wouldn't be good coming in or possibly going out. Coming in, you do need to scan your card. Mm -hmm. And so if, instead of getting another scan system from back there, just keep, come in the front door, but you can go out the back door. Yeah, at any program. You can now, really. Yeah, any program, you have to come in the main entrance mm -hmm. or the front doors, not through those doors. Other right. people have asked to just come in that door because they don't want to walk all this way. But you, and actually somebody pointed out this, this to me last night that you really don't want people using that back door to come in because they miss everything that's going on <coughs> here, what they can sign up for. And then, you know, there are people who um, come to programs and, you know, they're supposed to scan in, they don't, they don't pay for the program. And, you know, so we kind of find things out a little bit later. So again, just keeping everything, um, it's also for security. I mean, I, I think it's just going to say that. Plus, you can all these people that are going to the fitness center, and this is part of the fitness program, is to get you to walk. <laughs> the walking yeah. is good fitness. That's true. So anybody can go out that door, but nobody should be coming in that door. And I will say there are times when different programs are back there, and somebody will go open the door and let, you know, four people in, and they, they shouldn't be doing that. So, you know, you just mentioned something, and yeah. it's, it's not a huge problem. Well, that's what I told the person who, who asked me that more than likely it would be that way. You come in the front door, scan yourself in, and then you go out the back. And they were perfectly happy. They said, oh, okay. Didn't seem to be upset with it. 
So I think um, it, it, I'm looking forward to that room being the fitness center because if there's a program that's really increased, it's the fitness room. And I know that people would like more room to be able to do something and not hit elbows with somebody else. So. But as somebody else told me last night, he said, you know, some fitness centers, you have very little room in between. So. Mm -hmm. Well, I pack as much equipment as I possibly can in the space. Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, let's see. That uh, finishes building and grounds. So we'll move on to old business. Yep. So kick the tires. Campaign still going on. Dragging along. Um, right now we have fifty-nine thousand ninety-five dollars and eighty cents for the second van. Um, there may be a donor who's going to contribute 2500 towards the van. Yes, you told uh, me that. So uh, that would be wonderful. I am having to go out to bid for vans, um, and I just got a bid list from uh, Plymouth. It's through Plymouth County, so um, I have to, I already looked at some of what they offered, but the vans aren't what we're looking for. So um, I guess. I'm not really sure what I do beyond looking at what's on the bid list in Plymouth County, the companies that they have, what I what I do next. So that I would talk to Joe Cook, our human officer, about. So it's, it's not a van like what we had now. It's more like a bus. I think that's really the word that's used for what we're looking for now. It's they're called buses, mm -hmm. not not like those big street railway. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah I, I'm trying, like a bus, it's not like what you see PBTA driving around in, um, you know, that takes 46 passengers, it's not one of those. But definitely, if both of them would have a lift. So we are getting a van from the city? Yeah, the, the, through capital improvement. So, you know, you can thank city councilors for approving that. And the capital improvements committee for submitting it to city council for approval. So you're going to look for two of the same type of van? Or yeah, I would think that would be exactly what we would want. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I think it's an too. exciting time. Yep. Yeah. Okay, anything other? Not under old business. <clears throat> okay. Uh, any questions? Moving on to new business. And the volunteer, we already covered the volunteer opportunities. Okay, and then uh, I'm going to uh, I'm going to speak to the converted and the the people who already know what I'm doing because you're here. Mm -hmm. But I did send a letter to everyone about our mm -hmm. attendance. We need a more complete attendance, and if we're not getting a very good attendance. We're barely making quorums. In fact, if we had that resignation, we wouldn't have a quorum today. Uh, so the other thing is, if you can't make a meeting. Please call and let us know so that we don't have just you know show up. Right. And that's there. Yeah. Uh, the possibility was brought up by Patty of moving meetings to three, four, or five o'clock in the afternoon if this would be uh, give us better participation. But I, I'm, people I've talked to don't, don't seem to be too crazy about the idea. In fact, uh, Lorraine uh, White Wyman uh, wrote me a letter saying. That four or five would be too late for folks, uh, especially in the winter. Mm. Uh, I'm not sure mm. necessarily, but that, that may be the case. Well, people don't like to drive at night, and you know yeah. that. Well, it's true, and it does get dark about four o'clock. Mm. So, mm -hmm. it's just that we thought that possibly there's, uh, the timing was bad for a lot of people. I know we have several uh, of our members who work, and it's sometimes a little difficult to get yeah. in. Yeah, well, um, but you know, I think the thing about it, if you work or if you have something going on, is to call. Just let yeah. people know. I mean, that's right. So we, we were encouraging that. And uh, so if you have any suggestions on the, on the timing, let me know. Mm -hmm. And we'll see how the majority of the board feels. It doesn't look like the majority of the board wants to move the timing very much. Uh, Jim Spencer has uh, told, noted, and of course he isn't here today because he's sailing down the Danube very nicely. Yeah, well, it's probably better than attending this meeting, I suppose. <laughs> Ah, uh, no, uh, it's yeah. a lot more exciting. I'd rather be down going down the yeah. Although I enjoy your company enormously, right. but nevertheless. Yeah. But anyway, he noted that uh, very few of the board members are, he, he's in here at least three days a week teaching courses. Mm -hmm. He sees very few board members in the senior center during the month. Mm -hmm. Now we have John and Mary who are here. Mm -hmm. 
well, Mary lives here, and, uh, and, and John so is here John. quite frequently, and I'm here quite often, and of course, Jim's here a lot. We don't see too many others, and I'd like to encourage you, if possible, drop in for like one visit a month, or I mean, not one visit a month, one visit a week. I do. And uh, you can talk to the people here, uh, talk to seniors, what they like, what they don't like, what they may have a complaint about. Maybe they hadn't talked to Patty about it, maybe they didn't want to. You can also uh, check on classes. Now, do we have too many classes where a drop-in would be a problem? If somebody could come in and observe. Well, people can always observe, but um, there are drop-in classes. There, there are drop-in um, tickets. Yeah. Or people that but I was thinking of maybe a uh, board member coming in and, and just observing a class for a few minutes. Yeah, that's fine. Because I think the more you talk to people and look what's going on around here, the more helpful we can be to doing our job, which is to advise Patty and the staff mm -hmm. on doing their job. And that is our purpose, after all. And the more we know about this place, the more we talk to people who are here and what they want and what they don't want, I think we can do our job better. So I'd like to encourage that, if at all possible. Come in, get a cup of coffee in the uh, coffee shop. Unfortunately, Jim Spencer's uh, motion fails, so you won't get a free cup of coffee. Yeah. Unless it's the board meeting day of the <coughs> But, uh, you know, if you don't want the coffee, you can always get water. Mm -hmm. And uh, I know some of our members work, and so the, uh, the regular hours, and uh, that may be a little more difficult to come in, but uh, do what you can when you can. It's always nice to see all of you around. And that about ends my little speech, and then, like I say, I'm talking mm -hmm. mostly to the mm -hmm. yeah. people who are already here. I'd like to be mm -hmm. talking to the people who aren't here. Do you, I mean, just a question in terms of people who don't always show up. I mean, I know there's people who work and stuff. And, yeah. But if there are people who don't have, you know, typically work during the daytime hours, I mean, can, if, I'm sure you have, you have like a tent, you can see who's in this. Oh, yeah. Right. So having, just sitting down and talking to the person about why, you know, what's yeah. going on, you know, if it's not what you thought it would be, because when people agree to be on the board, you know, part of the, my sense and it used to be is, you come to board meetings. It's like how, you know. And we do know this is not the most monumentous board. It doesn't make. Oh, it's great. fun board. Come on. It doesn't make big decisions and that sort of thing. We are an advisory board, so wow. I think some people may may not care for that. But then, if you don't care for it, why stay on the board? Why not resign and leave a space for someone else? And not participate. And we've got at least two people that I haven't been showing up at all. Uh, this year almost entirely. I have no idea. Which uh, I believe Pat is going to be speaking to the mayor about or speaking to them. And uh, so, you know, if we can. Well, don't, I would assume that some of these people that are on the board, because when I worked at the hospital, there were a few boards that you were on, your employer would allow you the time to attend a, a meeting. I mean, it's a, it's a good reflection on wherever you work that your organization is in. Well, we're having one organization over here who's shaking your head. Right. Well, sometimes it depends. Well, my organization knows, but sometimes I have things I can't get out of meetings. Oh, yeah. no, but I, what I'm saying is, in, in, yeah. in, I mean, that was some people, they, it was yeah. an understanding mm -hmm. that they wanted you on a board to, mm -hmm. to reflect no, the organization you were in. And well, I one of our members is also self-employed, so. Uh, yeah, I well, yeah, I mean, I'm sure that that's. I don't know how it conflicts with this. Exactly, but, yeah. But, but the, uh, the problem is we have, like I say, we have 14 members now, and we're barely getting yeah. seven. Yeah. Yeah. And last time I think we had eight to the last meeting. Right, right. And I just wanted, I'm going to be out. I'm having surgery mm -hmm. on next week, so if mm -hmm. I won't be here at least for a couple of months. Okay. I, you know, I just thought it, Joanna. But that is a viable excuse, yeah. shall we say. Yeah. How about three times in your row? Yeah. Well, right. that's, if you look at our, our, our uh, actual what are the bylaws, bylaws say, bylaws yeah. say uh, after the third miss in a row, you can be removed. Oh, right. Unexcused absences. Right. Unexcused, Unexcused absences. but if you called and said I'm not coming. Right, yeah. right. Yeah. But yeah. also there's a, a year that you have to make six meetings a year. Mm -hmm. Or you can be excused and they're there mm -hmm. and you're not talking about whether you're, they're excused meetings or not. You have to make at least six meetings right. a year. Mm -hmm. So if you came every other week or every other month, you wouldn't you wouldn't fall under the three law, but eventually you would not make six meetings a year. So it's a, a it's a question of if you want to be on the board and you can't make the time, you don't you're not on the board anymore. Yeah. 
-hmm. If you, you want to be on the board and you can be here, uh, mm -hmm. be here. And that's what we're trying to encourage. Like I say, I have talked to the people who almost <laughs> always are here, yeah. which is unfortunate. I'd like to talk to the people who aren't here, but can't talk to them as well. As the chairman, you can't write a letter to those? Oh, yes, I will be writing a letter to them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, I wrote a letter to everybody in yeah, general. Because, uh, yeah. And the response was, uh, well, I got one response, basically. Lorraine, who said she couldn't be here, unfortunately, but <coughs> she did respond to it. Yeah, but she comes. Yes, she comes. She comes. She also res responded that she, about the, the, okay. the timing yeah. change. Okay. Yeah. She had an opinion on the timing change. She wanted to get out, and uh, mm -hmm. she did respond to the fact she wouldn't be here. I don't. I can't even imagine, even if it were people that are probably coming in. Four is going to be a lot better than no. the third. Yeah, yeah. You know probably I mean? not. Either way, yeah. yeah. I mean, I can you know. no. And I think you're right about the winter. It's, it does get dark yeah. before. Yeah. yeah. And uh, it probably would be as good. So, but it was just it was a thought yeah. somehow to try to increase our mm -hmm. uh, attendance, shall we say? Mm -hmm. And maybe the people who aren't coming. Maybe that's the reason why I'm coming. I don't know. <laughs> anyway, that's uh, all I have to say on the subject. So, can we have a uh, a motion to adjourn? No, we have something to go. Okay. So, um, your chair has uh, often mentioned that Highland Valley Elder Services needs two more members. We have Kathy, but we, we as a city, Northampton, has three um, spots. So, um, I received a letter from Highland Valley, so I'm just bringing it out. If anybody is interested in being, I know you already have heard this multiple times, um, so it doesn't have to necessarily be somebody who's on the board, but it could be somebody, a community member. And we used to have somebody who was a community member who represented the board. So if you think of anybody or talk to somebody, you know, just asking, they meet once a month. Um, I don't know what other, um, you might be able to share what other, you know, you might get put on the committee at Highland Valley. There are committees on there, yes, uh, yeah. you could, but you, don't have to be put on there only if you want to it's a voluntary thing it is a corporate board which means it's a legitimate it's a board that does vote on things and the votes do count they vote on monetary things they vote on the employment of their executive director etc so it's a little more serious but it's also um, quite enjoyable and, and challenging yeah. yeah and of course highland valley is spending most of the state's money that are and for the programs that they mm -hmm. uh, provide, the ASAPs provide in uh, this county. Mm -hmm. And in, in this county, that's those are the people there, that's the people who are spending the state's money. If you want these services, you have to go to Highland Valley. Mm -hmm. And I think we should at least have a say as to what's going on there. Yeah, so they're all the services that you're guaranteed under the Older Americans Act, the Federal Older Americans Act. So if you look up the Older Americans Act, and then you look up to see how our Aging Service Access Point is meeting the needs for the community, if you have any opinion on that, then maybe you should join the board. Yeah. They also are the reporting for any abuse of any right, elders. Right, they're they're the the yeah. So yeah. that there are the people the in this area, area that you yeah. report to. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, they have different. They have different departments. So they there, have legal so. services. And, yeah, uh, they have to yeah. have you know bill paying. And bill paying are taking yeah, over people so who good, are incompetent to be able to do it. But they, a lot of the state services, like I say, most of the state right. services are yeah. except for some of the, yeah, like except for the nursing homes and maybe some other things are run through Island right. Valley, mm -hmm. yeah. and so it's an important yeah. it's an important asset to this county. Mm -hmm. you, you mentioned. Um, we're mandated reporters, mm -hmm. um, senior center yeah. staff are mandated yeah. reporters. That's all I have. Okay, uh, now would you like a motion to adjourn? Barbara? Aye. Harry? All those in favor? Aye. Anybody opposed? <laughs> Never have. <happened. laughs>